Keystone's Thaw Opportunity, Pennsylvania's Vision for Sustainable Growth in Reading Achievement. The topic of today's session is Universal Design for Learning. This is the second of nine modules that all Pennsylvania public school teachers will be trained in next year. Pittsburgh Public Schools are fortunate to fortunate to have been awarded the Keystone Stop Opportunities Grant that will support us as we transition from the PA eligible content standards to the Common Core standards. Keep in mind that our work in year one is at the awareness level. The goals of this session are to identify and describe the three neural networks of the brain to support learning, to develop an understanding of Universal Design for Learning UDL, through its three principles, to identify and explore examples and resources to support the Universal Design for Learning principles, and to review the tenets of the Keystone to Opportunity Grant. The Keystone to Opportunity Grant is funded under the Federal Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Program. Our vision for sustainable growth in reading achievement is based on three components. They are improving literacy learning outcomes to increase achievement of students in danger of academic failure, to create a culture of data-driven decision-making with the use of Bernhardt's multiple measures of data, and to infuse digital technology in universal design for learning to address student learning challenges. As an educator, you should also know that UDL training will be helpful with best practices for effective teaching. UDL provides structures, supports, and tools for school leaders and teachers to use valid and reliable data to guide instructional decision-making in language and literacy. As we transition from eligible content standards to the Common Core standards, it is important to review the Keystones to Opportunity Grant components. The KTO grant supports literacy from birth to 12th grade. Pittsburgh Public Schools has targeted 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grades. The KTO Literacy Specialist in all K-12 schools will provide support in response to intervention and instruction and the core curricula. The nine training sessions required by the Pennsylvania Department of Education are intended to build sustainability at an awareness level as we transition to the Common Core State Standards. New this year is the Dibbles Next components and the Diagnostic Grade Assessments. The heat walkthroughs are a non-evaluative method of collecting evidence of student engagement. Pittsburgh Public Schools is in the process of writing, writing its comprehensive literacy plan that will align with the PA literacy plan. The Pennsylvania Comprehensive Literacy Plan has a vision and a mission statement. The essential elements of the plan are supported with guiding principles. Please recall your last turnaround training on using data for literacy decision making. It is important to utilize multiple measures when analyzing data. Utilizing demographic data, perception data, student learning data, and school processing data together and not in isolation more clearly provides the necessary data when making instructional decisions. By the end of this training session, you should be able to determine whether these five statements are myths or facts. First, UDL is a special education initiative. Second, UDL is synonymous with differentiated in instruction. Third, technology is a prerequisite for implementing UDL. Fourth, English language learners can benefit from UDL. And fifth, UDL is a framework that supports teaching to the standards for all students. Universal Design The design of products and environments to be usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need for adaptation or specialized design. Ron Mace Ron Mace is the creator of the term Universal Design. He was an architect and determined advocate who, influ who influenced international thinking about design. Due to polio, he used a wheelchair for most of his life. During this time, he experienced difficulties accessing his environment. This term has its origins in architecture and is now applied to education. When applying this definition to education, we can substitute instruction for products in schools and classrooms for environment. 
Take a look at this picture of a non-universally designed building. What do you notice that contributes to the building not being accessible for all? You can please pause now. Is it handicapped accessible? Could an adult with a child and a stroller have easy access? Would signage help to identify what's taking place inside the building? Is there a number to help identify the address? In Pittsburgh Public Schools, most buildings had to be retrofitted to come into compliance with the American with Disabilities Act. They had to make adjustments. On the other hand, Reisenstein is an example of a building that was designed from the beginning to be accessible to all. Other examples that make environments accessible for all could include automatic doors, elevators, crosswatch signals in their talking prompts, curb cuts in the sidewalks, and closed captioning. I'm certain that you've experienced instances in your life where a non-universally designed building has presented a problem. Now let's examine what universal design for learning comprises. As you can see, we're examining three networks of the brain, the recognition network, the strategic network, and the effective network. The what of learning is the recognition network, how we gather facts and categorize what we see, hear, and read. Identifying letters, words, or an author's style are recognition tasks. The how of learning is the strategic network. Planning and performing tasks, how we organize and express our ideas, writing an essay, or solving a math problem are examples of strategic tasks. The why of learning is the effective network, how learners get engaged and stay motivated, how they are challenged, excited, or interested are effective dimensions. Instruction should support all three networks. When we present information and content in different ways, we are providing multiple means of representation, the what of learning. When we differentiate the ways that students can express what they know, we are providing multiple means of action and expression, the how of learning. And when we stimulate interest and motivation for learning, we are providing multiple means of engagement, the why of learning. When we design lessons that support all three networks, we are maximizing students' opportunities for success. Let's look at an example of how the three neural networks are connected to a simple activity. If necessary, you can refer back to the Universal Design for Learning brain graphic of the three neural networks from the previous slide. Let's begin. Step 1. Activating the recognition network of the brain. The what of learning. What do you see in the picture? You can pause now. Some possible responses might be adults, youth, living room, piano, Victorian style clothing and furniture, a family gathering. All of these possible examples are from the recognition network of the brain, the what of learning. Step 2. Activating the strategic network of the brain, the how of learning. How old do, you, how old do the people look in this picture? What time period is it? What do you think is going on? You can pause now. Some possible responses might be it could possibly be the Victorian era as, ev era as evidenced by the type of clothing, furniture, wallpaper, and draperies. These possible answers are from the strategic network of the brain, the how of learning. Step 3. Activating the effective network of the brain, the why of learning. What stands out to you in this picture? How does this picture make you feel? Can you connect it to your ancestral past? You can pause now. Perhaps you responded that the photograph makes you feel comfortable. The people in the picture are at ease with each other. There's an awareness of the girl at the piano. This simple activity is an example of how we use all three neural networks of the brain to process information. Again, instructional planning that engages all three neural networks of the brain increases the likelihood for student understanding. What is UDL? Our classrooms are highly diverse. UDL is an approach to curriculum and instruction that minimizes barriers and creates successes. When we use universal design for learning as an approach to curriculum and instruction, we minimize barriers and create successes in our highly diverse classrooms. When you have time to watch either or both of these videos, you'll get a better understanding of the lack of accessibility for all students. If time permits, pause and view either 
one or two of these videos. To access the videos, right click on the website, click open hyperlink. Give the site a moment to open. You can pause now. Three neural networks of the brain connect. We've discussed how the three neural networks of the brain connect to the universal design for learning and its implications when designing instruction. Now let's look at the three UDL principles and how they connect to the Victorian picture we studied. When we were studying the recognition network of the brain, we were acquiring information and knowledge by looking at the photograph and noticing the items in the picture. When we give learners options for acquiring information and knowledge, we need to incorporate multiple means of representation. When we were studying the strategic network of the brain, we were demonstrating what we knew about the photograph. We had to explain why we thought it was the Victorian time period. When we provide multiple means of action and expression in our lesson design, then we are providing learners options for demonstrating what they know. When we were studying the effective network of the brain, we were motivating ourselves to make personal connections to the photograph by interpreting the mood of the characters in the photograph and considering our ancestry. When we provide multiple means of engagement, we are tapping into our learners' interests, offering appropriate challenges, and increasing our students' motivation. Here are some examples of how we can increase the UDL principle, multiple means of representation. The use of videos. Customizing size, font, and color. Converting text to speech. Activating prior knowledge. Highlighting critical features. Providing examples and non-examples. Showing multiple examples. Here are some examples of how we can Im implement UDL principle, multiple means of action and expression. Podcasts. Movies. Wikis, which are websites that allow users to modify content. Online discussions. Drawing comics. Posters voice threads, which are multimedia slideshows that hold images, documents, and videos and allow viewers to leave comments using voice, text, audio file, or video. It is important to note research confirms that immediate and ongoing feedback is the number one strategy to increase student learning. It can take place in any classroom at any time with or without technology. Here are some examples of how we can implement UDL principle, multiple means of engagement. Providing choice. Flexible grouping. Providing a safe learning environment. Self-assessment and reflection. Varying the level of difficulty. Please take a moment to read the T-chart on UDL versus DI. You can pause now. Although UDL and DI share the same goal of maximizing learning opportunities for all students, there is a distinction within the focus. Differentiated instruction is student-centered with changes made to curriculum materials, instruction, or assessment as per individual student's strengths and needs, usually done during or after instruction, whereas Universal Design for Learning is flexible curricula designed in advance of instruction with the broadest range of students in mind from the start. When utilizing UDL in your lesson planning, attempt to incorporate technology when available. Examples of this might include, but not limited to, the use of smart boards, iPads, classroom computers, school computer labs, and if permitted, smartphones. Please access these various websites to support the principles of UDL. When you right click on the website, Click Open Hyperlink and the site will open. Give it a moment. Access these now. You can pause. If you had taken the time to access these websites, you saw, for instance, that Natural Read Readers was a website where a box in the bottom left-hand corner could have a message typed into it. When you hit play, the message was read aloud. You needed speakers to be able to demonstrate this website. If you accessed Vocab Head, you could click on any vocabulary video on the right hand side to show a sample of how the website explains a vocabulary word by reading the definition and showing a visual representation of the word. 
by using Super Teacher Tools, you could see a Jeopardy link that showed a sample of a Jeopardy game. This is a creative and engaging way to review content around the core curriculum or any DI activity you've created. If you were able to access wallwishers.com, it provided a means to post online sticky notes. Students can respond to a question or prompt by posting their comments with their names. In makebelievescomics.com, it was an online educational comic strip created for students to express themselves and demonstrate their content knowledge. www.locgov slash teacher slash was a website that provided primary source documents for use in the classrooms. And finally, if you were able to access windows2universe.org, you saw a website that provided summaries, photos, and vocabulary of historical and current events in science and stu social studies. Now, let's see if we can determine whether these statements are myths or facts. Fact 1 or Myth 1. UDL is a special education in initiative. Myth. UDL is a design for all learners. 2. UDL is synonymous with differentiated instruction. Myth. Remember, UDL is a lesson designed for all learners considered before instruction where differentiated instruction is usually done during or after instruction based on a student's strengths or weaknesses. 3. Technology is a prerequisite for implementing UDL. Myth. Although technology is encouraged, it is not a prerequisite for implementing UDL. 4. English language learners can benefit from UDL. Fact. English language learners can greatly benefit from UDL considering their limited English language proficiency. And fifth, UDL is a framework that supports teaching to the standards for all students. Fact, an understanding of the three neural networks of the brain, the representative, the strategic, and the effective networks, together with the UDL principles of providing multiple means of representation, multiple means of action and expression, and multiple means of engagement benefits all learners by providing options for acquiring information and knowledge, providing options for demonstrating what has been learned, resulting in increased student engagement by tapping into learners' interests and offering appropriate challenges for all learners. Now that we have identified and described the three neural networks of the brain to support learning, developed an understanding of universal design for learning and its three guiding principles, and located resources to support the UDL, UDL principles, in what parts of a whole group reading lesson are we providing student opportunities for representation, action and expression, and motivation? Where do we find opportunities in a math lesson or other content in integrated arts lessons? Are any of these three principles sometimes or often missing in our lessons? These are questions we need to consider when designing our lessons. This is the thinking in which we, as educators, need to be engaged in order to transition to the Common Core State Standards, remembering again that this first year is at an awareness level.